<laughs> well, I like to do is show you guys how to graph an inequality, and if my inequality was z, uh, z plus <coughs> 4 is greater than or equal to 2z. So, what we have right here is just like when we were solving equations, what we have is we have our variable on both sides of our inequality symbol. So the first thing we have to do before we're doing any kind of solving is we have to make sure we get our variable on the same side. Because we want to make sure we isolate one variable alone so it's all by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide, well, which side do I want to get my variable on, um, alone on? Now, I could subtract this 2z to get rid of the 2z on the right side. Then I'd be left with 0, and I have to bring the 4 over there. So even though while it's possible, it's really not probably the most efficient way to solve the problem. Um, what I notice is if I get rid of the z, I'll have the z over on the left side, I'll have the z on the right side, and my numbers on the left side will work perfectly. So I'm going to subtract the z on both sides. That becomes 0, so I'm left with 4 is greater than or equal to 2z minus z is z. Now, students make the mis most common mistake by reading their graph when their variable is not in front, and they graph the line going in the wrong direction. So an easy way to always hopefully help yourself uh, make this correction is to rewrite your variable, or rewrite your answer so your variable is in front. Now, if you guys look at my symbols, I haven't really changed anything. I have z is still less than or equal to 4. It's just now I'm reading the z first. So if I'm going to do my graph, So when doing my graph, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to find your point. So my point is 4, so I'm going to make a nice big open circle at that point. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to pick kind of two more points to see if they're true or false. So I'm going to pick 1, and I'm going to pick 5. And what you're going to do is now you're going to plug those points into your answer, into your solution, to see if they're true or false. So I'll plug 1 is less than or equal to 4. And it's really helpful just to kind of say that out loud, the less than or equal to, or whatever your symbol is, to really help you understand if it's true or false. So is 1 less than or equal to 4? And you say, yes, that's true. Then I go, 5, is that less than or equal to 4? And we know that's false. Now the important thing for you guys to understand when graphing is if 1 is less than or equal to 4, 1.5 is going to be less than or equal to 4, 2 will be less than or equal to 4, 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, all the points that are left of my initial point are going to be true. So rather than plotting each point, we just like to draw a nice shaded line. And then we write an arrow saying it's going to go infinitely to the left. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to test our final point. So I'm going to say instead of writing, um, now I'm going to test my final point, which is 4 is less than or equal to 4. And we say is that true or false? And since 4 is equal to 4, so 4 is less than or equal to 4, since it's equal to, we're going to fill in our point. If it would have been false, I would have left that open. So that's how you solve and graph inequality when you have variables on both sides. <coughs>